it has become extremely plausible that this trip between the maternity ward and the crematorium is what there is to life. And we still have going into our common sense the 19th century myth man is a little germ that lives on an unimportant rock ball that revolves about an insignificant star on the outer edges of one of the smaller galaxies. But on the other hand, if you think about that for a few minutes, I am absolutely amazed to discover myself on this rock ball rotating around a, a spherical fire. It's a very odd situation. And the more I look at things, I, I cannot get rid of the feeling that existence is quite weird. I know that. See, a philosopher is a sort of intellectual yokel who uh, gawks at things that sensible people uh, take for granted. And sensible people, existence is nothing at all. I mean, it's just basic, and just go on and do something. See, this is the current movement in philosophy. Logical analysis says you mustn't think about existence. It's a meaningless concept. Therefore, philosophy has become the discussion of trivia. No good philosopher lies awake nights worrying about the destiny of man and the nature of God and the, uh, all that sort of thing, because a philosopher today is a practical fellow who comes to the university with a briefcase at nine and leaves at five. He does philosophy during the day, which is discussing whether certain sentences have meaning and if so, what. The problem is he's lost his sense of wonder. Wonder is, is like, a, in, in modern philosophy, something you mustn't have. It's like enthusiasm in 18th century England. It's a very bad form. But you see, I don't know what question to ask when I wonder about the universe. It isn't a question that I'm wondering about, it's a feeling that I have. Because I cannot formulate the question that is my wonder. The moment my mouth opens to utter it, I suddenly find I'm talking nonsense. But that should not uh, prevent wonder from being the foundation of philosophy. So, there is obviously a place in life for a religious attitude in the sense of awe, astonishment at existence. And that is also a basis of respect for existence. We don't have very much of it in this culture, even though we call it materialistic. In the culture that we call materialistic today, we are, of course, bent on the total destruction of material and its conversion into junk and poisonous gas as quickly as possible. This is not a materialistic culture because it has no respect for material. And respect is in turn based on wonder, on feeling the marvel of just an ordinary pebble in your fingers. Look, here is a tree in the garden and every summer it produces apples and we call it an apple tree because the tree apples that's what it does all right now here is a solar system inside a galaxy and one of the peculiarities of this solar system is that at least on the planet earth the thing peoples <laughs> in just the same way that an apple tree apples now maybe two million years ago, somebody came from another galaxy in a flying saucer and had a look at the solar system and they looked it over and shrugged their shoulders and said just a bunch of rocks and they went away. Later on, maybe two million years later, they came around and they looked at it again and they said, excuse me, we thought it was a bunch of rocks but it's peopling. <laughs> and it's alive, after all, it has done something intelligent. Because, you see, we grow out of this world in exactly the same way that the apples grow on the apple tree. If evolution means anything, it means that. But, you see, we, we curiously twist it. We say, well, first of all, in the beginning, there was nothing but gas and rock. And then intelligence happened to arise in it, you know, like a sort of fungus or slime on the top of the whole thing. Uh, but we're thinking in a way, you see, that disconnects the intelligence from the rocks. Where there are rocks, watch out. Watch out. 
because the rocks are going eventually to come alive.